Welcome back to Primary Source China Investment. This week, we're here with show 03. And we want to get right into it with three topics that have been in the news um, very recently regarding China. The first is China has been selling treasuries. The second is the real estate market. And the third is these China-based companies listed in the US. And without further ado, let's get into the first topic, which is um, China selling the treasuries. So this was big news. And China is now below a trillion US dollars holding of, of treasuries, which is the lowest since 2010, um, which goes to show you that they hold a lot of treasuries. But what's the reason for this? And you know, there's been a lot of speculation about, oh, China wants to sell US treasuries so they can diversify um, and you know, invest in other, other assets, or they're just dumping US dollar. Um, I think it's a, a much more nuanced discussion. Uh, as anybody who's watched U.S. dollar, U.S. dollars has U.S. dollar has appreciated against all other assets, including renminbi, um, since the beginning of the year. And the other thing is return, right? We always nobody wants to talk about return, but recall at the beginning of the year the German ten-year was negative, and last month it topped one point seven percent, and now is about eighty-five basis points. That's a huge uptick. Similar with France. France began the year at 32 bips, touched 238, and is now about 1.38. The 10-year U.S. started the year at 165. So if you're looking at the beginning of the year, U.S. was 165. German was you know, negative. France was 32 bips. So obviously, you want to hold U.S. But now it's a little, bit, it's a little different. U.S. 10-year hit 348, 348, but now sits at 268. China has other options. It's not just hold U.S. dollar. You can hold euro. You can hold the sovereigns of a lot of these uh, high quality, uh, high credit quality European names. What, what's your thoughts, Peng Guo? Uh, I think uh, China uh, adjusts the, the uh, treasury bond, uh, U.S. treasury bond uh, investment uh, is a bigger. Uh, uh, it's a bigger investment decision. So it's a quite a. Uh, serious and uh, professional decision, uh, as I know. Uh, majority, uh, their goal is for the safety. So safety is the uh, first. So, and uh, uh, and also they, they consider the investment return, what uh, they're doing is. Uh, I know they spend, uh, they hire the very professional guys and the managing fund. It should be, looks like other uh, fund management. Uh, and secondly, I believe uh, right now a lot of the investment related to the political uh, uh, decisions. So they probably consider the political decisions and make the um, asset uh, uh, diversification. But overall, uh, uh, I think it should be like the uh, market decisions. Uh, they try to reduce the uh, low interest, uh, 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 low return the investment. And try to get a uh, diversified to uh, other uh, higher return, or they probably uh, invest more in a hard asset. That also goes to holding renminbi versus holding U.S. dollar versus holding other currency. If you look at the chart I mentioned earlier, renminbi U.S. dollar. I mean, renminbi has depreciated versus the dollar year to date six percent. But but the uh, the country's uh, decisions is more uh, like the diversified uh, investment. You know, there are some geopolitical issues uh, that that we don't want to uh, ignore. But certainly, there there is uh, the need for return. So uh, obviously, you know, like you say, the smart people managing uh, this fund in China, they're not just going to make knee jerk. Uh, investment decisions. They're going to have a long thought out process and, and change that investment thesis based on what's happening in the market. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Yeah. So, so the second thing I wanted to talk about was real estate. You know, real estate won't go away. It's not going to go away. It's, it's big. It contributes a lot. But the headlines in the last you know, week to 10 days have been very scary. It's the biggest slowdown since 2008. Beijing's already, you know, Beijing's getting ready through the PBOC for a trillion renminbi of you know, loans with the hope that the banks will contribute more. And, um, you know, it reminds me of the old joke. You know, if you owe the bank $100,000, it's your problem. Uh, if you owe the bank $100 million, it's the bank problem. So, you know, developers, <laughs> you know, they're going bankrupt, right? Developers are, are, are defaulting on U.S. dollars. It's, you know, it's easy to Google all of this. But who pays here? 
And I remember we did a show many, many months ago, and it was about Belton Road, of all things. But you said the lender here is the one that's at risk. The equity holders of those institutions are going to be one holding the bag. It's clearly not going to be the, the people who bought a condo or two. Those people seem to be pretty safe because, you know, there's going to be other developers and maybe government entities that set in, step in to finish the condo developments, right? Real estate is really the big topic, everybody interested, especially in China. Uh, but uh, uh, you should know the different player in this market, they face the different risk. Generally speaking, I think the individual house uh, uh, buyer uh, uh, get the biggest uh, risk. So they get to suffer a lot of the uh, terms and also the uh, unstable the interest rate as, as well as the quality of the condo apartment. So that's caused the tremendous of the problem recently. And for the real asset uh, company, uh, I think um, they should be fine right now. I see the news uh, looks like a, like a couple of the big guy, like the Jia Zhao Ye. Mm. Yeah, so they already uh, survived. Uh, the first uh, uh, time is already gone. And also the Wan Ke, that's also already passed the first the time. So they're looking like the better. But the, the uh, as the individual, they really need uh, uh, more protections and uh, more uh, fair treatment. Uh, 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 for the uh, for the house, it's, mm. if if this have some problem, it's very hard to find a place to get the money back or uh, solve the problem. Another big problem is really from the government uh, policy. So while the China get like the back to the thirty years ago, they started the real estate business. They talk uh, think about the Singapore model as well as the Hong Kong model. Uh, unfortunately. They pretty much choose the Hong Kong model. Uh, uh, yeah, that's yeah. is. Uh, uh, yeah, that's of course the today's problem. So I, I heard some vice minister, this uh, Huang Qifan, the vice chairman of the Financial and Economic Affairs Committee of the NPC. You know, he was in Chinese media. He's saying China has no need for new construction. You have to stop the demand. Supply is really irrelevant. You have to stop the demand. That's exactly right. So it's uh, it's really like the population structure get a change. And mm. whatever, they choose the model, they, they already uh, uh, to the end. So uh, uh, no matter they want it or not want it, they have to change the model. Mm. Otherwise, they will be get crushed. Yeah. Well, that brings us to the third topic. And we're moving fast, which is great. It's these China-based uh, US listed companies. So the SEC and the CSRC came out in the last you know, week and said two, diff two different things. So CSRC said they're going to create three tiers of companies related to data sensitivity, which means the firms that are listed in the U.S. with the most data sensitivity have to figure out a way to get you know, relisted uh, in, the Hong Kong, in Hong Kong or on the mainland. And then Gensler came out and said, look, Chinese companies, we're going to give you to the end of the year to comply. Um, with U.S. audit requirements. Uh, that is not going to happen. So practically speaking, what is going to happen? Well, you saw Alibaba make a big announcement earlier this week. They said, our primary listing is going to be in Hong Kong. So those big, profitable companies that can meet the listing requirements in Hong Kong or the mainland, they're going to choose to do that. And that's going to be very easy for some very big names. The markets are now big enough, liquid enough, and deep enough to handle those listings. The problem is the majority of the smaller cap companies are not profitable. They would not meet the listing requirements for Hong Kong or the mainland. So what's going to happen with those you know, 130 or 150 or so uh, Chinese companies? Um, generally speaking, if the entire sector get uh, delisted, it's pretty much the definitely a loss for China. That's also a loss for the uh, United States. Uh, and uh, uh, looks like uh, they just cannot figure out the uh, work together to find their solutions. Mm. And obviously, I, I, I recall that like the Apple, the, they can work with the China government to figure out the customer data sensitivities uh, uh, issue and the final solution to do that. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it will probably be some 
you know, short or medium term volatility. But there's a lot of listed companies, you know, in the U.S. that maybe shouldn't even be listed companies. You know, a lot of these companies came here. They did an IPO. You know, they got to ring the bell. They got to have, you know, they can say that they have a listed entity. But truthfully, the compliance requirements uh, of a listed company are, are quite high, actually, uh, despite the 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 the, uh, the audit procedures, just having a listed company has high compliance costs. So if you want to have now a dual listed company and you're a small cap company, I don't think that really makes sense. Finally, most of these companies have no business in the U.S. The only reason they actually listed in the U.S. in the first place was because the listing requirements were lower, right? You, they, they wouldn't have been able to list yeah. in Hong Kong or the mainland because they weren't, prof, you know, you have to show three years of profitability and you have to be of a certain size and sales and those kind of things. So it, it didn't really make sense. They just, you know, found a way to go public and they did that. So now they're going to have to find a way to, you know, maybe delist or go private. Yeah, that's uh, definitely is a pretty bad thing uh, for the uh, China uh, companies. They, uh, especially for the high tech, sometimes obviously, you know, the balance sheet, uh, it looks bad at the beginning years, whatever, really bad for the uh, future growth. If it cannot get outside the capital, they probably just die as, as an infant. So they have no chance to grow up. It's like this audit issue has been an issue, you know, for for many years, you know, uh, that's right. Yeah, since 2009. So, uh, you know, it may seem like it's coordinated with some political agenda, but, you know, certainly it's been an issue for for many years. And quite frankly, Beijing is not happy with a lot of the structure, you know, the so-called Sina structure. Yeah, I think the best way is still back to the market, because right now, China and the United States or the market are driven. And so back to the market, provide the service uh, to the market and also follow the uh, generic market rule uh, together. So that, that would be uh, uh, easily on the same page. Otherwise, you should simply emphasize your personal uh, or, or um, uh, uh, the interest in your side. Uh, you cannot reach any agreement forever. Yeah. Well, well, we'll see what the outcome is, but I, I have a pretty strong feeling that the outcome is going to be smaller companies are going to have to go private or delist. Larger companies are going to have no problem. Um, a lot of these companies that listed in the U.S. probably should never have listed in the U.S., and if they find a home, it'll be on the mainland or in Hong Kong. Yeah, that's a, nobody knows. So yeah, um, that's just, that's, that's just my guess. So that's a really, yeah, that's a really big... Uh, <laughs> Big problem. Uh, not that we can answer for that. Yeah, it's a trillion. It's a trillion dollars in market cap, right? I mean, that's what we're talking about here. Is a trillion dollars. Yeah, like like I said, if we both agree with the uh, 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 free market uh, uh, principles as well as uh, some of the regulation principles, and then we uh, we should work together to uh, addict to the uh, market. So uh, just to maintain and support uh, both market. Right. Well, we covered a lot this week. I know it was three big topics. We didn't even touch the whole uh, Nancy Pelosi visiting Taiwan, and I'm not going to touch that at all. And it doesn't really affect what, what Peng Wu and I work on all day, every day. So thanks for tuning in for show 03, and we'll catch you next week. Thank you. Thank you.